Hi, it's me, Olivia. Welcome to my channel. Please subscribe to my channel for interesting stories and visit my Patreon page for early access. Link in the description. Thanks. Cindy folded up the letter, having read it through for the third time. A tear worked its way down her face, cutting a track in the carefully applied makeup. Cindy recalled other tears just two weeks ago when she believed P. Art of her carefully ordered world began to crumble. An ironic smile brushed across her face as she thought about the bitter wheat life she lived. Joy and sorrow, pain and pleasure, love and hate, gain and loss all jumbled together to make Cindy's transition from male to female challenging. The events of the past two weeks etched themselves into Cindy's memory like comic nightmare engravings that bring laughter at one moment and terror at another. Not a word was spoken that Sunday morning, but pain doesn't need a verbal trigger. Cindy arrived a bit early that Sunday. She was greeted at the door by the smiling face of the adult Bible class teacher. Cindy knew that he knew her background. The board had discussed her case after an older gentleman had asked to have her removed from the church. Instead, the pastor and board simply asked her to not use the women's restroom and not to attend women's ministries meetings. The last hurt, but she could live with it. That had been four months ago. Nothing else had been said. Her friendship with some of the church ladies had grown, and it was obvious the discussion had been contained on the board. Two of the older ladies in the church, who had sort of adopted Cindy as their daughter, waved for her to come sit with them. They were sitting directly behind the older minister who had complained about Cindy. As luck had it, Cindy sat directly behind the man and his wife. Fresh tears pressed against Cindy's eyelids as she remembered what happened next. The man turned around, saw Cindy, whispered to his wife, got up and headed out the door. At the back of the auditorium, the Sunday school teacher stopped them. They talked. They looked at Cindy. They pointed at Cindy. Finally, they acquiesced and found seats on the opposite side of the church. It didn't require a master's degree to know what happened. The pain cut deep. Cindy's first impulse was to grab her Bible and run out the door. But her pride overcame her impulsiveness. She stayed seated through Sunday school fighting the tears to retain her composure. She even used her debating skills to convince herself that they really weren't talking about her. That there was some other explanation. She couldn't tea think of any, but there could be. There had to be. Nature and despair played T-H-E next hand for Cindy. By the end of the lesson, Cindy had to go to the bathroom, badly. Perhaps the tension played a part. Who knows? She carefully slipped out a side door without anyone noticing during the break. Cindy lived just about a mile from the church. She could drive home quickly and make it back before the second song was finished. The question was, did she want to make it back? Being read on a street corner, in a store, or at the mall by strangers is rough, particularly when someone is rude, yell s out a dirty name, or laughs loudly. It hurts. TSs who say otherwise will lie about other things too. But it's worse when you are read by people who matter, people you know, people who know you. Then the pain becomes personal, deep, and lasting. For the Christian TS, church is second only to family in the level of attachment. The pain is doubly intense when faith and derision are wed in an unholy union of righteous hatred. This was the pain that tore through Cindy's heart like a dirty switchblade. She felt she should stay home. Simply disappear. Walk away and never be seen again. But she couldn't leave without one last look around. She wanted to see and talk with the people she had grown to love one last time. Besides, she had just enough pride to not let him know how deeply he had hurt her. Besides, there was still that chance that it wasn't her at all. So, Cindy patted her eyes dry, dabbed on a bit of foundation to cover the smeared mascara, grabbed her purse and car keys, and headed back to church. The backside door creaked a bit as Cindy opened it. It seemed like every head in the church turned as she walked in. On reflection, Cindy knew it was just the people sitting on the last two pews who noticed. Cindy sat on the back pew near the door. Just in case. Well, she'd rather not think of that. It probably would have seemed like a rather ordinary service a week ago. It was special, though. It might be her last at this church. The choir sang several of her favorite songs. The pastor preached a sermon on the sin of discouraging others. Cindy thought that was rather appropriate. Thank you, Lord, 
She whispered when the sermon title was announced. After service, Cindy was talking to an older lady whom she had befriended. As she finished up that conversation, the Sunday school teacher approached. I'm glad you came back, Cindy. I hope you weren't hurt by what happened in class. Cindy briefly shut her eyes. That confirmed it. Her presence and their prejudice had driven a couple to leave service. Cindy wanted to shout back, No, of course, I wasn't hurt. TSs have hearts made of rubber and have ice water flowing in our veins. Nothing ever hurts us. But she couldn't bring herself to add to the man's obvious embarrassment by lashing out at him. So, she said demurely, No, of course not. I just had to check something at home. My sanity, she added non-verbally. Cindy sat still for a moment in silent torment. She saw no way to continue at the church. The man had put it on a him or her basis. Cindy couldn't t-force that issue. She was no heroine, no warrior for the cause. She just wanted to blend in as another lady in the church. And if that was impossible, to just be left alone. Rising slowly, Cindy added a smile to her face and began to greet people. Behind the smiling face, a backwater of tears was forming. Cindy knew this could be the last chance to talk to some of the people here, but she had to be casual and bright, just as if nothing had happened. In the parking lot, she sat in the car for five minutes, composing herself so she could drive safely. She fought the tears all the way home. Once in the door, the dam broke and the waterworks began. Cindy glanced at the letter she was about to post and remembered the two, well, actually three, letters she wrote that Sunday afternoon. The first to the pastor thanked him for his courtesy and told him that nonetheless she felt she should leave to prevent any further trouble. The second, in a less formal tone, was addressed to the Sunday school teacher thanked him for his teaching and his kindness, but pointed out that trouble was not in the will of God, and thus she was leaving. The third was never mailed. It was an apology to the man who walked away from her. No matter how hard she tried, she could not make the apology sound sincere. Finally, she gave up. Lord, forgive me, she prayed, but it will take some time before I can love that man. Right now, I am going to have to work on not letting bitterness form. With the last letter written, she cried again. She thanked God for her tears. For her last 12 years as a man, she could not cry. She rediscovered tears with an old sad movie. She wasn't too sure how she could have handled some of the crises of the past several months without the release of weeping. Laying on the couch, she kept sobbing quietly until she finally fell asleep from exhaustion. A dense fog surrounded Cindy's life for the next week. She taught her classes almost mechanically, ate without tasting the food, sleeping in two- and three-hour spurts, then waking and being unable to sleep again getting up and reading until almost time for school. Wednesday night was difficult. Bible study night. It was an informal service where Cindy made many friends. To cope with staying home, she called a friend on the East Coast. She de-met this friend over a computer bulletin board featuring a gender forum. The woman was already into her real-life test. A friendship grew up online and finally led to several phone calls. Hi, this is Cindy. Can we talk? You don't sound so good. Is everything all right? Not really. I'm sort of down. Listen, Han, talk to me. So, Cindy talked and talked. Two and a half hours later, she had talked out what she cried out a few days before. The problems hadn't gone away, but someone listened and cared. Cindy smiled, remembering that conversation. Cindy was an only child. This woman was the closest thing to a sister that she had. Then a sadness passed through her heart as she realized that this was the type of thing she would have called her mother about. But the folks still didn't know about Cindy. That was still in the troubled future. Friday, the letter came. It was from the Sunday school teacher and signed by pastoral staff. Cindy, it read, We do not want you to leave First Church. We believe that it would be hard for you to find another church which will accept you while holding you accountable to the Word of God. While we do not condone your mode of dress since it is contrary to Scripture, it is your right to attend worship services, and we will defend that right. If someone does or says something that causes you grief or pain, then that is their problem. God demands that we love unconditionally. We definitely want you to stay. Those tears that Cindy thought had been used up on Sunday came flooding back as she read the letter. 
Here were loving people who didn't understand, or even condone, her way of life and yet loved her enough to encourage her to stay. But how could she stay? Was she going to chase another person out of the church as oh she could go? Was she going to put the pastor and board in the middle of a potential conflict? And yet, would she let one person deprive her of friendship and fellowship? In spite of it all, she felt she had to leave. The counseling session on Saturday marked a tragic first for Cindy. She broke down discussing this incident. Why should you leave? asked Luana. I guess more than anything else, Cindy answered. I'm afraid if I stay, the talk will spread. If I leave now, then they will just say, remember that nice lady, Cindy, who used to come here. But otherwise, I'm afraid they'll end up saying, remember that interesting freak. Luana straightened up at the use of the word freak. Her darkening eyes and regulated breathing spoke of a controlled anger. Cindy only remembered this later. At the last word, Cindy began to cry uncontrollably and felt like a fool because she had forgotten to bring Kleenex. Luana was prepared, though, with a box of tissue and a gentle pat on the arm. Oh, I'll find another church, said Cindy, as the tears subsided. But I'll arrive a bit late and leave a bit early. That way, I won't take any chances of being read. And if I am, it won't matter because I won't be attached to anyone there. That's very sad, especially since you so recently emerged from your shell. I wouldn't want you to build it up again. Well, shells are useful. They do keep you from getting hurt. At least until I can tell anyone that challenges me. Strip search me if you wish. Until then, I, LL, have to slowly vanish. With a wry smile, as the session finished up, Luana said, I don't know. I think Cindy's pretty irrepressible. As Cindy shakily descended the steep steps to Luana's home office, she didn't feel so irrepressible. But she had to get herself together. She was meeting with a maybe TS for coffee. She knew he, she would have questions and concerns. Cindy had to keep up the image of a strong woman who could handle any trials that came her way. Sunday. Two church services at two different churches. People shaking hands when the pastor told them to. Ignoring visitors and each other the rest of the time. Mediocre music and less than exciting sermons. Cindy was reminded that you don't know what you have until it's gone. That afternoon more tears. Before the first church service, though, Cindy dropped off a letter with the Sunday school teacher at first church. The letter explained why she felt she must leave, but it also explained simply what it meant to be T.S. and dealt with the scriptural objections pointing out that gender dysphoria simply is not covered in scripture that it ISN, TH Cite, or even transvestitism. She also added that she was celibate. The last line of the letter said in her one concession to bitterness, I'm sure that you, the board, the pastoral staff, and others will breathe a deep sigh of relief when I've left. The envelope could have been sealed with tears. Wednesday, Cindy decided to drop in for Bible study. She came in late and sat in the back of the auditorium. Her problem person didn't tea come on Wednesday nights. She planned to leave without talking to anyone. No such luck. As the last amen was said, she turned toward the door and almost knocked down the Sunday school teacher. Cindy, he said, I'm glad you came. I, LL, be sending you a letter. I have to get another couple of signatures on it. But we really want you to stay with us. Cindy fought back her tears and said, Thank you, but I. Please, he said, wait until you get this letter. Sure. Cindy said politely, managing a weak smile. As he left, Cindy began her escape walking briskly toward the door. Hold on, I've got to shake you up. It was Sister Becky, the associate pastor's wife. Cindy had become friendly with her before. It was her little joke related to shaking someone s hand to shake them up. It was one of those things that you find yourself missing about people even though the joke is fairly lame. Shaking Cindy's hand vigorously, she said confidentially, Please, don't go. We all love you. That did it, Cindy almost ran from the church racing the tears to her car. Now Cindy sat holding the letter in her hand, tears pouring down her cheeks carrying a dark stream of mascara with them. The letter was signed by the Sunday school teacher, the pastor, youth pastor, and associate pastor, and each member of the church board. It read, I hardly know where to begin. I have read and reread your letter many times, riveted each time to every thought. 
Thank you for being willing to risk so much so that I might understand your situation a bit better. I had a warm feeling inside knowing that you were comfortable enough to share so openly and vulnerably. Let me offer an apology if I stated anything in my letter that was offensive as it related to your situation. I assure you, if stated, it was due to a basic lack of understanding on my part. I wept as I read your letter and caught a glimpse of what you must be going through, the terrible injustices you suffer which are so cruel and unchristian. I felt compelled to share your letter with the pastoral staff and the rest of the board in a formal meeting. We all agreed. You are officially welcome to attend worship services at First Church. The entire board and pastoral staff, as evidenced by signatures, are in total agreement. We want you at First Church worship services and feel not only is it your right, but it is God's will for you to be there. Too much would be lost by you not returning. Please let us minister to you, and you in turn minister to us by helping us gain insights and understandings that we perhaps would never attain otherwise. Both the board and the pastoral staff wanted me to react to your statement that you were sure that I, the board, the pastoral staff, and others would breathe a deep sigh of relief when you go. The truth is, we feel it would be our loss if you decide to leave. Once again, if your presence causes someone a problem, it is, indeed, their problem, and it will be handled as appropriately and professionally as possible. Please take that risk with us. We believe, ultimately, the glory of God shall be revealed, and all can fellowship together. Please make allowances for my rambling. Yours was a most compelling and powerful letter, and my mind goes off in every direction. I sincerely hope I have conveyed to you that we want you at First Church. Hoping to see you soon. I remain yours in Christ. The signatures at the bottom of the letter brought a fresh deluge as Cindy read the names of each pastoral staff member and every member of the church board. One line in the letter kept haunting her thoughts. Please let us minister to you, and you, in turn, minister to us. Am I being selfish, Lord? Cindy asked, Am I looking for anonymous womanhood with such diligence that I'm ignoring the possible positive benefits my Tseism can bring? Was he just being nice, or is there a ministry for me at First Church? Am I protecting the church, or am I protecting myself by leaving? Do I want to live a life without risk, or am I willing to risk living a life of vulnerability? As she prayed, she heard the words of Christ speaking from the Gospel of John. In the world you shall have tribulation, but I have overcome the world. I guess if you risked so much on Calvary, I can risk a little on East Hedges, Cindy sniffed as she put down the letter. Well, she said standing up. The women's ministries are having the Christmas boutique and bake sale Saturday. They LL need some goodies to sell. I think I'll bake brownies. Please subscribe for the next part and visit my Patreon page for early access. Thanks.